Hey friends, I'm Jessica and I am so excited we're hanging out. You know, I've been thinking a lot about resilience lately and just to make sure we're all on the same page, resilience is simply our ability to bounce back and grow stronger after we have struggled, failed, or faced hard stuff in our life. You see, each of us will experience some sort of setback in our life. Big or small, challenges are going to come to all of us. The kind of challenges that could knock us down and leave us wanting to give up. But that's exactly where resilience comes in. It helps us find the strength to get up, keep going, and never give up. It allows us to stay in the game. I don't know about you, but for me, resilience is definitely something I need more of in my life because I found myself in many situations where I just wanted to give up and give in. In fact, there was this one time in elementary school when I was in fifth grade. You see, I had been the spelling bee champion in second, third, and fourth grade. So I was going into the fifth grade spelling bee pretty much expecting that I would win. And on the third word I got, which was the word awkward, I got it wrong and I was out and I lost and I was so upset and I felt so defeated. And after I lost, after having won three spelling bees before that, I wanted to give up. I didn't wanna try again. I was like, that was the last spelling bee I ever want to be part of. And I don't know, maybe you can relate. Your story might not sound just like mine did because your challenges might look different. But if there's one thing I think we all know, it's that feeling of wanting to give up, give in, and stop trying when we're going through really hard things. When you keep failing that subject no matter how hard you try, or when the constant anxiety you carry never seems to get any better, or when your best friend abandons you for a new friend group, or when you keep getting cut from the team at tryouts, or when your parents get divorced, or when illness or heartbreak or disappointment or pain comes your way. They make us wanna stop showing up and start giving up, and honestly, I understand why. We live in a culture that constantly tells us to believe that the best kind of life is an easy life. From restaurants, to travel, to shopping, to communicating with each other, and so much more. Pretty much everything in our world tells us that life should be easy and convenient. Listen, I know there are a ton of reasons to be thankful for things being convenient, easy, and fast, but there's also an interesting downside to it for us. Because now, anytime anything is really slow or really hard or takes a lot of work, it's easy for us to believe those things are bad or not worth it, and we're ready to give up. But here's why this is dangerous for you. The majority of the things that happen in life aren't going to be easy. Think about it. Every single relationship that really matters, whether with Jesus or your parents or your siblings or your friends, will at some point be difficult. Any hobby or activity, anything you really wanna be great at, will at some point be difficult. Some of us are going through things personally right now that are so much more difficult than you think you can handle. So if we give up every time something gets difficult, then we'll risk missing out on pretty much everything worth having in life. And this is where resilience comes in. Because the difficult things, the bigger things, the challenging things you face in life will require you to be brave. They'll require you to have courage. They'll require you to work hard, to develop some resilience, to not just face it, but to keep going through it. The good news, whether you realize it or not, you have access to everything you need to find that resilience in yourself. You have access to God who will never leave you or give up on you. God who sent his son Jesus to make anything and everything possible for us. See, knowing Jesus changes everything, including our ability to be resilient. Today, I wanna to take a look at a short verse that was written by a guy named Paul who believed in and followed Jesus with his life. Paul wrote this in a letter that we can find in the New Testament in the Bible. Paul started out as this guy who was kind of the worst. He treated people pretty terribly, especially if they were Christians. But then Paul encountered Jesus and just like that, the mission of his life changed. Now Paul was all about sharing the hope of Jesus with others because for Paul, that hope changed everything, but it wasn't easy. In fact, life for Paul was pretty challenging after that. He was disliked, beaten, abandoned, treated unfairly, and even put in prison. We're talking about some pretty major setbacks for Paul here. And like any of us, when we face setbacks, Paul had a choice to give up, or to be resilient. 
And lucky for us, Paul chose resilience. He kept going, kept pushing, kept believing he could come back from his setbacks, but not because of his own strength or power. Paul believed he could be resilient because of Jesus' strength and power at work in him. Let's take a look at how he put it in this letter he wrote to the Romans. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I love this passage because it gives us a new way to see ourselves when we face setbacks. You see, to conquer something simply means to be victorious over it, to win it. So to be more than a conqueror means we not only win or achieve victory, but we're overwhelmingly victorious. Like we win by a lot. It's like winning a basketball game 142 to like six. We know that the other team put up a fight, but in the end, they were no match for the winning team. That win wasn't just a conquer, it was more than conquering. And with Jesus, that's exactly how we can approach each and every setback we face in this life. With the confidence that we can bounce back, with the confidence that we can conquer it. But if we're honest, I think a lot of us would say that when it comes to challenges, we don't see ourselves as conquerors at all. In fact, we're looking at ourselves in those moments through a totally different filter. You know when you take a picture or a selfie and then you put a filter over it? Sometimes that filter can literally change the whole picture, right? So I took a selfie and I'm gonna try to put some filters over it. Let's see. Ooh, I like that one. That's kind of bright. Oh, that changes the whole color of the picture totally. I like that. Ooh, that's so bright. These are so fun, I love these. Ooh, that one's kind of strange. I don't know which one of these I love more. I have no idea. Well, we all have filters on our lives too. We all have a way we see things, ourselves included. And this is a pretty big deal because ultimately, what we see determines who we'll be. So how you see yourself when difficult times happen has an impact on who you'll actually be in those moments. If we see ourselves as defeated, we're more likely to be defeated. If we see ourselves as weak, we're more likely to struggle to be strong. If we see ourselves as not good enough, we're more likely to believe we don't have what it takes. If we see ourselves as incapable, we're more likely to never even try. But here's the good news. Knowing Jesus changes everything. And that means it can change the filter we use to see ourselves in any moment, especially when setbacks happen. It gives us a new filter, a new way of viewing our situation and ourselves. If we see ourselves as conquerors, we're more likely to conquer. If we see ourselves as strong, we're more likely to be strong when setbacks happen. If we see ourselves as having what it takes, we're more likely to be confident in who we are. If we see ourselves as capable, we're more likely to take on the things that scare us. And if we see ourselves as resilient, we're more likely to approach challenges in life knowing that they don't have the power to break us. Now here's the thing. I'm not talking about just encouraging yourself with positive words. Sure, that positive self-talk can be so helpful in any situation, but here I'm talking about more than that. I'm talking about choosing the filter that tells us what's true about who we are in God's eyes. I'm talking about choosing to see ourselves the way God sees us. And in case you need help with that today, let me remind you of what God thinks and says about you. You are created in the image of God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You were known before you were knit together in your mother's womb. You are a new creation. You are alive in Christ. You are righteous, forgiven, holy, blameless, always able to access God's love for you. Deeply loved, made right with God, rescued. Let me show you what I mean. See this bouncy ball? Imagine this is you. When you face hard times, what will happen? That's right, you'll bounce back. And because of what God says is true about you, you'll keep bouncing. You'll keep facing those challenges and you won't give up. In God's eyes, there's literally nothing that you can't do, be, or conquer. And if that doesn't encourage you to feel resilient when setbacks happen, I don't know what will. Now, for some of you, this may be all the encouragement you need to change your filter when you go through difficult things. This may be the truth you can hold on to when you find yourself standing in front of a setback. The fact that you are more than a conqueror, that you are all the things God says about you, is all you need to go out there and conquer. But for others of you, I know this is hard because the troubles, the challenges, the setbacks you're dealing with seem never ending. 
you're barely able to stay in the fight against what you're facing, let alone conquer it. If that's you, let me just say this. I'm so sorry for what you're going through. I'm sorry that life seems harder than it should be. Even though bouncing back from what's holding you back feels impossible, trust me when I tell you it's not. Because all that stuff God says is true about you, it stays true no matter what. All that stuff about being more than a conqueror, that's true because of Jesus, whose death took down everything that's standing in our way in life. To encourage you here, I wanna look back at one more thing Paul said. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Do you see that? Those setbacks that feel like they're gonna take us down permanently? Paul reminded us to see them for what they are, light and only lasting a moment. Those things can actually shape us into who God made us to be. It's a new filter we can use to see the challenges in front of us. And here's the good news. You don't have to conquer that setback right this second. It may take time, but eventually it will become lighter. In some cases, you'll realize that what you thought would last a lifetime was really just a short moment in your life. And then next time you face something like it, you'll do it knowing you can be resilient. But in order to do that, you have to choose to never give up on you. God won't give up on you. We won't give up on you. So you can't give up on you either. Remember, never give up on you. The more you get up, show up, and choose to not give up in the face of setbacks, the stronger and more resilient you'll become. And to help you consider how you can choose to never give up on you, let's go back to these questions that we wanna ask ourselves to help us become more resilient. First, ask, what is happening? What are the setbacks you're facing right now? Think about the challenges that are causing you to want to give up, the difficulties in life that feel heavy right now, the things you feel like you just can't conquer. Sometimes simply naming those setbacks that we're standing in front of makes them lose a little bit of their power. So start by being honest and naming what you're facing right now. Next, ask, what is true no matter what? What filter can you change to see yourself or your setback in a different way? A way that reminds you of what is true first. Go back to that list we made that shows us what God says is true about us. Start there. Which of those things you need to remember is true when facing your troubles? And finally, ask what can you do? This is where resilience requires us to do something. So when you experience troubles, what can you do to keep going? Maybe it's sharing with a friend you trust about how you're struggling. Maybe it's talking to a mentor or a group leader, a parent, a counselor for more help or guidance. Maybe it's memorizing scripture that encourages you or praying consistently for strength to get through it. Maybe it's knowing your limits and practicing self-care, doing things like taking walks or journaling or listening to music or taking a nap. Whatever you can identify to help you take a step towards choosing to build resilience, give it a shot. Listen, I know setbacks feel heavy. And sometimes finding the strength to keep trying is just hard. But that's where groups at church come in. Groups are a great place to open up about what you're dealing with so that you can find the support you need to keep going. So will you consider sharing with your group today? Let them encourage you to never give up on you.